Good afternoon, everyone. Second time, that the young and So this is my second visit to Germany. And just a few short months ago, I was able to visit the United States for the third time. And I was able to actually stay in the United States for almost three months. And because of this, I thought to myself that it was probably going to be difficult for me to get the necessary permission to visit Germany right on the heels of that visit to the United States. But in the end, as we now know, I did get the permission to come to Germany, and from a certain perspective, this was a surprise to me. That's why things getting looks like improving a little bit. Then have more courage, encourage somewhere. Then in the next time, maybe we will try more, more, more country. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Actually, we did. We did try the first time. That was your first year trip. We planned that time. Uh, I think have uh, four or five countries. We already tried, but we can try again. And the Germany thing you were on Begalia and feeling much comfortable. Correction and Germany get the Nero Nero Roto. This Nimbo to China. Tin Tambu, you understand this Kensarado. Tombun Roach. That will be hard. Now it's done much more and more beautiful. Germany breakfast also. Taste 
The lunch is, looks like breakfast, not much, but uh, breakfast is good. Now, during this second visit to Germany, I'm feeling very comfortable in Germany. And in particular, the German language is sounding more and more pleasant to my ears. It has a very nice sound to it. During my first visit, the German language sounded a little bit strange, a little bit rough. But now it sounds very beautiful. And furthermore, the German breakfasts are very delicious. In terms of lunch, uh, it looks a little, mostly just like breakfast, not much to it. But the breakfasts themselves are wonderful. Um, uh, Germany, the Yundu Sane, Samba Gashun City, and the lots of greens, right? That the Wonjang, the Zishina, the Mabutai, and the Samba Gashur City on those. And then I think Germany, when the hotel in the Duchasa, we never want to put lots of effort. To be a green summer wadaji, kuyu zungyolia tuba, the bezushida che, or the stongdo chezang, the ji, Germany, mimare, tana singi, sijun, tane, and a, the kuyu zungyob dang, and a wonjan zer with the jiwa che do. One of the things that I appreciate about Germany the most is its um, rich and luscious greenery. There's so much uh, greenery, plant life, trees, vegetation, and so forth in Germany. And in the same way, uh, the hotel that we are staying at and holding this program at puts a lot of effort, uh, as far as I can tell, into being eco-friendly and protecting the environment, having environmentally friendly practices. And more broadly, the German people and the German uh, governments on various levels seem to have a, a great deal, put forth a great deal of effort into protecting the environment. And I really rejoice in this. <laughs> We need to do lots of things that we can. Tando ina ngazu chegwa ta mabushi da yu debi. Labara do kuyu sunjo tuala ngazu ji tando ina chegwa ta mabushi ji mabushi yores chetu ya. Hmm. Tando ina do um. An tiring ye juja di ta kuyu sunjo tuan debi ta juja ta ji jisha. And there is a lot more that we can do still to help the environment and protect the environment. And therefore today, uh, how we can further help and protect the environment is, will be the main topic of my remarks. Uh, a lot of people ask me these days about my own personal passion for helping the environment and where that came from. What were the causes and conditions that led to me becoming enthusiastic about paying attention to the environment? Around 
龙巴库尔，刚才我们提到，这个是一个中国的传统，它也不是呢。俺们传统的，这是一个国家的传统，这是一个地方的传统，这是一个地方的传统，这是一个地方的传统，这是一个地方的传统，这是一个地方的传统
Jindin Jusane Tradition is some of that. So you can be met to you, some narrow layer. Then there will be a curry down. Tana singi, that is Jerry Dan, Takari in the ticket that she don't take the sword and civil as of that is some law. Could you eat that the living system send and other person, Flandrovichina, Ludroviji ever. The Nizigi, Kandra, could you de object in Dravichilia? ダラシが上げた。え。あ。カジュアルティ、ペンボルドブチリア、サムロマダンチ。だ、ディジ。ダラシ、ナジュリスペクトシェサルブチダン、ニュバイエデブチ。だ、ディジ、リビングシステムル
John Junkru down the Nambek Nambasan gave it. The two Yamnism, the Tibur and Javasta Yudivich, Java Yudivici. And a dream to San Eta Tata Gondi Shivana Singi Tadanga Zuchin, Zubin Tolia, a Serig. Information about what you're information about politician party in Dagana Singi, social activist, environment activist. In our dark uncle, company down, Tanaji, company the Tame game. Kuyuzun gives out the cash money, but it Tame gets here the edge, the rich on the other. Tayne, we need you taller. Lalin Tarregulia, Kaduine Azuchi, Kanga Tedeochi. Azuki Seven and Sinjida, and Azu Samba Nazi, or Javan and Sinji, Lalin Gulia, the young to me. Information alone is not enough. That the Azuji, the information you have, Leben Nalor, you have a tea, so Ning Nalolia, Bezi, Tona, you so I gave it. Tell La Lenlia, country Targo Misa, the Kate Mishad. Tell ya that is spiritual tradition, someone with the Zabulinki, religious tradition, spiritual tradition. Did you get all the Then they need to play a cultural role to play. So, my brother, she did a pentoche to Anubi. Then they young city, Labado Janava Sanke Virginia, and Tanki Kondishu and Sinki, Kuyu than the cultural Kuyuki, Sungub Dang, Gunjin Bugi, Java Yedeva, the Jimmy do pentoche to us. Buddhism and the environment are two topics that are connected with each other. As I mentioned earlier, these days there's lots of information that is available to us in the world. And this applies to the environment as well. A lot of, a lot of information is available in terms of what kind of state the environment is in and so forth. And many people and groups in the world pay a certain degree of attention to all of this information. Political parties express concern about the environment in response to the information that has become available to them. There are many social activists and environmental activists uh, doing various things, raising awareness in different types of ways. Many companies have taken note of the challenges that the environment is facing and have expressed an interest in becoming part of the solution to these problems. And so a lot of different people and a lot of different uh, groups in the world uh, are talking about the importance of the environment. But when it comes to uh, pragmatic solutions and putting them into actual practice, that's more challenging than just talking. So one of the biggest challenges that we face now is how do we translate all of this talk about supporting the environment and being concerned about the environment into pragmatic actions that will actually help the environment. So this shows us clearly that having information alone is not enough. What we need is to first start with the information in our brain, then have that information bring forth some type of a change in feeling in our heart, and then have that change of feeling in our heart be the stepping stone for some type of pragmatic action. Um, it's very important to uh, take it through all the way to that pragmatic action in the end. So in relation to this, I think the various spiritual traditions of the world definitely have a role to play. They definitely can be of benefit in this situation. And especially 
there is a great opportunity for Buddhism as a spiritual tradition to be of benefit when it comes to protecting the environment and when it comes to the endeavor of trying to uh, sustain the health of the environment. The four examples of the ตะกุชุมบุเชกอร์วาตินิสังเกเวกอร์เลยอ่ะนั่นชื่อชื่อชื่อชื่อชื่อชื่อชื่อชื่อชื่อชื่อชื่อชื่อชื่อชื่อช
this log and bad in the Ningong Kala Sasara, I sing don't all in the edge of the dead. That didn't wish that to her. Says I'm a zook up to do Sangi Sangi said the nearby there. Nazu de Sangi Mahakum, two or Tiza, the good is Kalahabro. So it was a very ordinary event in this way, in terms of the physical setup of how the whole thing happened. And from some perspectives, uh, some people might think it looked too ordinary, because after all, there's lots of people in India who sit under trees. You can look around and see all, a lot of old people taking naps after lunchtime and so forth under trees. And so, um, if you were walking near the area where the Buddha was attaining enlightenment, you might not even notice that that was the Buddha and he was attaining enlightenment or had just chained, attained enlightenment because the, the physical situation he was in was just so ordinary. We will disappoint it. Not that exciting. Because of that kind of peaceful moment situation, very ordinary situation. Today, he can connect with the universe. And connect with the natural. Connect with all the sentient beings. He can Then Dana Shingi great moment for him, for the Buddha, child. From our perspective, this might be disappointing because we might want something more grand and flashy to have occurred, but it seems too ordinary. But from the Buddha's perspective, because of the um, powerful ordinariness of the moment of his enlightenment, the peace, the quiet, and so forth, he became able to uh, connect with all of the universe. He became able to connect with all of nature, to connect with all sentient beings, and to realize the true nature of all things. So from the Buddhist perspective, the situation of his enlightenment was perfect. The material Desires of the day bed so disturbed someone with that chick. Church is heavy in air, that exciting to chick, not to the water of church. That you love Sanji, you are rich, the water of church, the chick tone, spiritual materialistic discharge. Our minds, on the other hand, are so disturbed by material desire that. When it comes to Dharma, uh, we're kind of pushed along by our usual habits in a way that we come to expect the Dharma to be exciting or hope that the Dharma and Dharma practice is going to be exciting or entertaining in some way for us. And that leads us to have an attitude of spiritual materialism. <laughs> The picture and the example, the picture and the In terms of the way the Buddhist tradition um, acknowledges the environment, there is the traditional language which refers to the outer environment as a container and the sentient beings as its inner contents. So that's like the picture or metaphor that the traditional Dharma language uses to talk about the relationship between the world or the environment and living beings. Take a picture, the example, the yes, natural environment, and 
the connections of the Pinsy, Jiggly Jigging in Java, Giavati, a casualty, turn to Yachi, pay a watchy, read to something. And this metaphor from the Buddha's teachings is, in my opinion, um, a wonderful illustration that, that clearly highlights the mutually dependent relationship that sentient beings and the world have with each other, a mutually dependent connection. So the outer environment, which is a container, is similar to a hall, but not a hall in the sense of just being a lifeless object, a hall as a living entity that we must protect. And uh, if this outer container is harmed, uh, then its contents will be lost. That is very clear. If you have a container that is holding something and harm comes to the container, then it's very clear that what the container is holding will be lost. Tangye in terms of talking about the environment from a scientific perspective, this is something that I really can't do much of because I don't know the science in depth and uh, I don't uh, perfectly have a perfect understanding of the science that I know from a scientific perspective. So what I've tried to focus on mostly today in my remarks is uh, my own personal sense of why it is reasonable to have a feeling of concern toward the environment, as well as uh, the natural connection that I feel is present between environmental concern, concern for the environment, and the practice of the Buddha Dharma. And I've tried to share my thoughts about these topics with you in a brief manner. <laughs> living style it's quite painful it's quite not so easy improve strength, spirit, that's 
information along the Nazulia understand the Kashwe Koarochi, Nieto Reti, Yena, Unetanega, the Gulong Shugia, this that you want this Galaha, Simshu, Simshu Pal and Jimmy realistic in the Tuan, the Sonagia Jida, Lijigi Be Kashweta. However, protecting the environment is really not an easy thing to do. And the reason this is the case is because it really comes down to our lifestyle. And this issue is very much connected with our day-to-day -day habits. And if we examine those and find that they need to change, then the process of actually changing our day-to-day -day lifestyle and our day-to-day -day habits can be painful, can be not such an easy thing to do. And so, as I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of information, but information alone isn't enough. We need to actually transform our motivation and further empower our motivation to help the environment, to give much more spirit and robust energy to that motivation of helping the environment. Uh, and that can be a challenging process. So to really and genuinely um, transform our relationship with the environment, I think it's important to work on our motivation. Mm. Need in one summer. What is really need? What is just one? That is the case. 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 ก็ชื่อว่าจริงๆตบมันจริงๆแม้ไปนะอันท่าเจ๋อโทรมาหรอกอันท่าเจ๋อมาตัวนั้นอยู่ตามโทรมาหรอกอันที่นี่ดูก
Sometimes Uh, so it's like that. And I think that uh, it's good for me not to say too much more because I think sometimes we have a habit of saying too much and doing too little and we just end up wasting time. And I feel that even from my own perspective, even from the perspective of the person who's giving this talk about the environment, I feel that there's more that I can and should do to actually help in terms of my own actions. And I would also encourage you to try to increase your actions that help the environment in a way that harmonizes with your own abilities and in a way that you bring those actions into your life day to day. So I think that if we can change our actions on a day to day basis in accordance with our own abilities, then our actions will accumulate like drops of water accumulating drop after drop and that we will definitely contribute to a positive change. For tomorrow's uh, teachings, we will focus on the topic of the Buddha Akshobhya. And the day after tomorrow, the empowerment of Akshobhya will be conferred. And I can say at this time that it will be an actual empowerment, not just a uh, transmission as we had with Avalokiteshvara. So I want to be careful and note this because otherwise some people might think that, well, we were promised an empowerment for Avalokiteshvara, but it was just a transmission. And maybe there's a danger that uh, when promised an empowerment of Akshobhya, it will just become a guiding instruction. So uh, when it comes time to give the Akshobhya empowerment, it will be an actual empowerment, and I will try my best to do the actual genuine empowerment of Akshobhya. The Akshobhya the Kasa Injinan immovable said Gurmde. Just <laughs> Akshobia avatar, maybe it's alien. Tengrawa Yina immovable is that day. The Kenzara's daughter. She did so the Akshobia Sade Kashenan turned that guru on the sun. 
Shetan, Shetan Yorba, Midan was a Shemidan was a Shetan me was a Semdi, Shetangi, Gumjo was a Midan was a Liz Gurdo, De Kujimutusan. So the Korangi, Minjuba Koran, Minjuba Lagua, Yunzen Karasana, Korangi, the Sangi, Minjuba Korangi, Tambo Changu, two gave a Golia. Dinny Changu Mato Gibado. Semjin Sulian, Shedanga Samba Gig means it. Then take a Tamjay Shavinza, tell a dinner and Minju was at the Chumro. Shame down as Harus. Shedangi Minju was at the Dishona. This quarter she are Mandros and Bristol. So, in terms of the word Akshobia, it's, it's been translated in our uh, programs that have been distributed, uh, the, the brochures that have been distributed for this program as immovable. Um, and I, I thought that that was um, uh, interesting to see uh, that description in English. Um, the full name of Akshobhya sometimes in Sanskrit is given as Akshobhya Avatar, which, and, and many people might be familiar with the concept of Avatar from having watched the movie Avatar. But the Akshobhya part, if we look at the real meaning of that term, I think it comes closer to being undisturbed. And the, the main reference in that context is being undisturbed by aggression or anger. Uh, one's mind is not disturbed by aggression or anger. And I think that understanding has deep meaning to it. The reason why the Buddha Akshobhya came to be named as such, if we look at Akshobhya as uh, bearing this meaning of non-aggression or not being disturbed by aggression, not being uh, shaken by anger. Uh, it's because when the Buddha Akshobhya, uh, in his previous lifetimes, when he first gave rise to the wish for enlightenment, he made a firm pledge or commitment saying, from now onward until the time that I am enlightened, I will not harbor any aggressive intentions toward any sentient being, any intention of anger uh, or hatred toward any sentient being. And therefore, uh, when he attained Buddhahood, he became known as the Buddha whose mind is not disturbed by anger, the Buddha who is not shaken by hatred, uh, the Buddha who is unmoved by aggression. <laughs> That's all for today. Thank you.